everyone, this is Teacher Afton again and welcome back to my class. This time, we are going to learn how to write an argument. We are going to use the text that we have read before in our class, which is about Orpheus and Eurydice. Now, let me take a short recap about Orpheus and Eurydice's story. Not long after their marriage, Eurydice died because a viper stung her. Arpheus was so determined to bring her back to the upper world. So, he persuaded Apollo, the god of the underworld. But, he gave him one condition. It is not to look back at his wife while on their journey. But Arpheus took a glance at her too soon. And so, Eurydice vanished. Now that we already recall the story of Eurydice and Arpheus, I want you to prepare your literary companion pages 254 to 255 now the question is how will you start writing your argument first you must identify your claim your claim refers to your opinion about a certain topic or subject considering Orpheus and Eurydice's story you can have different opinion about Orpheus actions it can be you agree with it or, you disagree with what he did at the end of the story, which is taking a glance at Eurydice. Upon writing your argument, you have to identify whether you agree or not with Orpheus' actions. This time, you are going to use the selections that we have read before, which are Orpheus and Eurydice by Edith Hamilton, and the second one is Eurydice by Hilda Dulil. This time, you are going to get textual evidence from this text which will support your claim. Now, let me give you an example. Remember, this is just an example. You can also have your own opinion or ideas about the topic. Now, as a reader, my own opinion is that Orpheus' action is inappropriate. Why? I've got some textual evidence from the text. You can also open your textbook so you can check for evidences. The first evidence I got is, he knew that she must be just behind him, but he longed unutterably to give one glance to make sure. And how does this uh, evidence support my claim? This shows that Orpheus was just thinking of his feelings. And the second one coming from the poem is, For your arrogance, I am broken at last. Now, this shows that Eurydice was upset of Orpheus' action. And the last one is, If you had let me wait, I had grown from listlessness into peace. And this shows that Eurydice could have been in peace if he did not try to save her just to fail. Just to fail. Okay, so the last one shows that Eurydice was being accustomed to the underworld, but Orpheus gave him another or new hope. That is why Eurydice was very upset. Now that I have given you examples of textual evidences and explanations, I assume that you also got your details coming from your textbook. Now, how will you construct your argument? Let us have the first paragraph. Your first paragraph must contain Introduction of the myth Orpheus and Eurydice and the poem Eurydice with your claim. How about the second paragraph? It could be second or third. It depends on the transition of ideas. So this must contain evidences from the text and elaboration how it supports your claim. And the last part is the summary or conclusion of your argument, you're going to sum up your idea in the last paragraph. Upon writing your argument, there are several things that you must take into consideration. First one, convention. This refers to your spelling, grammar, capitalization, and proper punctuation mark. The second one is organization which refers to the transition of ideas from paragraph to paragraph or sentence to sentence. It is better if you're going to use transitional words or phrases. 
Next one is content, which refers to the ideas that you included in your argument. And the last one is word choice. I hope that you understand our lesson and I want you to submit your essay or argument in Schoology. Have a nice day!